What an irony that for you this is the first video, but for me it's the last. Because I finally made all the videos for the entire Contending Perspectives class and the entire International Monetary Economics class, which by the way was following on top of having taught econometrics during the summer and video, made a video for every one of those lectures. Why, one may ask, uh, are you doing that? After all, you're doing on-campus lectures uh, that are simultaneously broadcast via Zoom. I'm not real confident that's going to work. Um, I'm a little worried about the people watching on Zoom. Uh, sure, you can record it and upload it, but there's liable to be a lot of glitches. I want to make sure I got time to go over a concept completely what I had planned in the first place. Uh, we've also got some other things that are going to interfere with the daily activities. And Lord knows if we are going to end up, sorry, I'm going to change the focus a little bit, um, like the uh, St. Louis Cardinals and unable to stop getting COVID-19. Uh, so we may all be sent home very quickly. Uh, let, let us hope not. So uh, there is a video for, as I emailed you guys, a video for every single lecture already uploaded, ready to go. So, and what if I get sick? All right, so worst case scenario uh, to me uh, is me getting sick. Uh, and so then it doesn't matter because I've got that up there. We can keep going. I also wrote every single exam and every single quiz and then found out I uploaded them wrong and stuff like that. Anyway, but, but it's all done now. So um, usually I sort of start the semester kind of fresh and excited. Right now I'm just looking forward to Thanksgiving. Uh, but we'll make it through, brothers and sisters. We'll make it through. All right. Now, this here is your first day of class lecture now that I've had all that upbeat stuff to start with. Uh, and why did I choose on campus uh, rather than online if I'm worried that we're going to end up there anyway? Because uh, I miss talking to students. The summer econometrics was okay. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, I, I got to know a couple people pretty well. And I really enjoyed that and enjoyed you know, banter and so forth. Didn't enjoy the time Meredith Whiting scared the hell out of me because I had forgotten that people were, were also, I'm, I'm lecturing away and uh, all of a sudden I hear somebody ask a question. I was like, oh my God, what was that? And I forgot that there were people on the computer right there. So anyway, uh, it, it's been a difficult time for all of us. Um, so, uh, but I, I, I want to at least try it. I mean, you know, let, let, let's give it a shot and see how it goes. Uh, so that's why I want to be on campus. That, that, that's why I decided to do that. If for no other reason than to know what your face looks like. Uh, because I, you know, there were a number of students in the summer class I already knew, so that worked out okay. But uh, there were some I didn't. And um, anyway, so, so we'll see how it works out. All right, so I want to, I made a bunch of changes over way, the way I usually do things. And once again, in keeping with my theory that I don't necessarily know I'll be able to get everything neatly um, in the space we have allotted to us, on Tuesday and Thursday, get, get everything explained, um, I'm videoing it first, just in case. All right, so uh, th th in fact, this will be the more reliable source. And for the people on Zoom uh, who may by, you know, 8.15 on Tuesday morning be asleep. Um, so they've got this to cover everything as well. Uh, so you got a permanent record here uh, of, of uh, the introductory stuff for the class. And it's really important if you want to do well in the class, All right, really important. Every once in a while I have people just sort of skip the first day, it's just the first day of class. Oh my God, that's the day when you lay out how to succeed in the course. Those are what I call idiots. Now, uh, let's see, let me, let me fire this sucker up here. I seem to be digressing, which is precisely what I enjoy doing in class. Come on, oh, I hit the wrong button. The F5 key, I can, never, I can never tell when on this computer it is um, activated and not activated. I tried both things just now. Okay, where is, um, uh, come on, man, F5. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, no problem at all. All right, here's the one thing I didn't redo. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push the camera down here in just a second. Uh, I, I did not make up a brand new... PowerPoint here that I, I normally do for every semester, um, but I got enough stuff I'm going to go over anyway without this, so I don't think I really need it. Let's see. Yeah, okay, that's that's good. That's good. All right. Hey, look, that's me. Um, and uh, oh, look, that indicates I got to TCU in 87, so I've been here for 34 years. Yes, that's hard for me to believe, too. Um, 
All right. Uh, this is not really relevant uh, because we aren't here in a class period, but I do always tell people that it's going to be the whole time of the first day of class, plus part of the second day of class just going over how the course works because I think that is extremely important for everyone to start off on the same foot and the same as they say in sociology, definition of the situation. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're not going to... Oh, well, actually, let's back up and, and, and I will show you that. Let me zoom in on that a bit. Those of you who have been in my class before, you know what this is. Uh, there's a behavioral agreement that basically says, hey, don't talk in class. But then after I turn that... Uh, a after I hand that out, which I can't do this semester because we're not allowed to hand anything out that we're going to get, well, in or out. Uh, but then I hand out this. Uh, what's John Harvey going to agree to do for you? Remember you're paying a great deal of money to come to school here. Uh, and um, absolutely, that's exactly why I did all this background stuff to make sure that uh, if I plan for the worst case scenario, you're still going to get the best I can give you. Um, let's say you use class time effectively. No, I'm not going to do that because uh, I like to make a lot of jokes and stuff, but I'll do my best. Uh, come to class on time. Yeah, 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 that's easy. Uh, look, well prepared lecture. That's fun. I look forward to lecture. Respect all students as adults. Okay, I hope I get to know everyone's name this semester. It's going to be a little more complicated. Again, those of you who have been in my class before, I usually take a picture of the class, have everyone fill their names in, and I memorize that. Uh, and, and I guess I'm going to have to do that with the class role pictures, your, your student ID pictures, but you don't look the same, a lot of you. Uh, those were like from freshman year, some of you are senior. Um, so anyway, I'll do my best. Be available outside of class on Zoom, of course, continuously. Uh, and by the way, well, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, let's see. Evaluate all students by the same standard. Okay. Uh, fully answer all questions regarding my evaluation of your assignments. That's one thing that I find annoying when a professor is like, uh, you know, oh, well, yeah, you did something wrong. No, 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 no. Tell me in detail what I did wrong or change my grade. You jerk uh, is what I used to say to my professors. Uh, let's see. Sure, I'll do that. Okay, man, I'm gonna. I'm really working on that this semester. Closely monitor all assignments because it's gonna be so much harder. Uh, but uh, and then I'm not sure what ensure all voices uh, are in class are heard is, but it sounds really nice. Um, okay, what have we got next? Uh, all right, all right. I think we're ready to go. L l let me just actually. That that's all false this semester, um, and we're gonna cover that on the syllabus. There is something over here I want you to see though. So we're gonna skip through all this. And all right, I want you to see the grades from previous semesters. So I'm going to skip right to this because it's the last thing that's on the PowerPoint that is relevant. And then we're just going to go to the class webpage. Um, but, uh, you know, when I was in college, I would love to have seen, well, what did people make in this last year, you know? Uh, and I did not update this with spring 20. And honestly, in spring 20, we were going to pass everybody. Uh, the only people who didn't pass my courses in spring 20 were the four people I caught cheating. Um, but uh, otherwise, everyone passed. So I'm not sure that the spring 20 uh, numbers would have been very useful anyway. But here's containing perspectives. My 8 o'clock class. And by the way, I'm doing this for both classes at once, if you don't mind. Um, the 8 o'clock classes, you can see here, we got like 57% A and B over the course of the years. And it can vary quite a bit. Uh, and about 21% DNF, that means 20 percent, that means one out of every five students in my class has to retake the course. And um, yeah, that, and, and I'll tell you, this is back, this is in regular semesters when I would give out all the stuff, when I would give out all the questions. So I'd give out a list of the, of the possible questions in the course, let you work on them, uh, let you send them to me and I'll check them for you. And then you come in and take an exam where 80 percent of the points are related to word for word questions off the list. And then um, after that, there were are my hell questions where you, you had to try to really figure out something challenging. But you can still make a B uh, by doing, you know, really, really well on the straight from the list of study question stuff. They just didn't want to do it. All right. So, OK, well, if, if you don't have self-discipline in my class, you're screwed. All right. Um, it's a little bit different this semester, in, uh, only in the, uh, the sense that I'm giving 17 different grading possibilities instead of three. I normally do. Exam one, 30%. Exam two, 30%. Exam three, 40%. I'm not doing that this time for reasons we'll get to here in a minute. Here's International Monitor. That's the other class I'm teaching. 17% uh, DNF. It's actually, as you can see here, even though it's a much more difficult class than any perspectives, the grades are better. Uh, one thing is you're required to have already taken intermediate uh, macro. Oh, that just reminds me. A guy just asked for a permission slip, and I didn't ask him about that. Anyway, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to that in a minute. Perhaps I'll be doing that while you are listening to me talk about stuff. Uh, and then what we got here, 20, 
52% uh, A and B, which is slightly lower uh, than the other class. You got like one third C, but this is a really difficult course. Um, let's see. Oh gosh, I don't know if you need to see all that stuff. That's like uh, you know about uh, people who don't come to class get this grade, and people who do come to class get that grade, and so forth. Um, and, and so you know, uh, you, you know stuff like that. I'm not going to worry too much about that this semester. Uh, determinants of grades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come to class. Um, and that's irrelevant this semester. Oh, oh, this is relevant. Uh, I didn't even think about this one. I just added this recently. Um, and that was uh, people who are in more than one of my classes at once. And I know a couple of y'all are, are in both of my classes this semester. How do they tend to do? And I was like, I don't know. That's a really good question. Uh, because I can, I can look up the data. And I did. So uh, what I found was of nine students whose stuff I found, and look, they were taking intermediate macro and, and containing perspectives at the same time. One of them made two A's, and, and I happen to have access to things like GPA data. And yeah, that person has a 3.9. The other one made an A and a B. That person has a 3.8. The other one made an A and a B. I didn't have their GPA because they had graduated earlier, uh, but they made an A and a B. And they barely, I, I remembered them. Uh, this one here, barely missed. OK, now we get down to DNF. Well, they missed 40% of the lectures and they skipped the final in micro. That, that kind of sucks. Uh, and uh, let's see, 3.109, ah, that's right. That, that joker there just had a bad semester, repeated containing perspectives, uh, and made a B. Uh, this person here had a 1.831 GPA and skipped the final. That one missed 90% of the lectures. And get this, that last person had a 0.858 GPA. So, uh, as I always tell people, the really big important thing is, you know, are you a good student? Uh, you will have your exams doing the, uh, on the same day. You will have your quizzes on the same day. You'll have all the assignments doing the same day. Uh, but that's not the deciding factor. The deciding factor is whether or not you're a good student. Okay, so I think that may be the last slide here. Yeah, except for that. I'll never forget the first semester I decided to start uh, telling the class that uh, specifically at the, on the first day of class. And I had a guy in there, really nice guy. But it was like the third time he had taken a class with me uh, where he was repeating this one. And he literally started shaking his head yes when I put this up on the board. And he was like, yeah, because cause he would be able to make it for like the first couple of weeks and then he would just stop coming. All right. Okay, so there, there's the, the little uh, PowerPoint that I normally do in the first day of class. Uh, not as relevant this semester, but still. And now what I want to do is, here is, because we've got some considerable differences this semester, um, and by the way, I have never used this before. I've always done my own stuff uh, on the side for uh, TCU or, or, you know, for my classes. Uh, so it was a real, um, it took a while to learn how to use this, but I think I've got it now. And I'm, I'm really happy that I had econometrics in the summer as a chance to practice using this. Ooh, I know what to do. I was sitting there struggling, trying to figure out where to push and so forth to make the mouse work. And what I can do is I can hook up an external mouse to make it much easier. Okay, well I can hear the recycling being picked up. All right, well let's go to containing perspectives first, okay? Uh, and, and look, I put in my own picture. Uh, you're allowed to upload your own picture. In, in econometrics I used a picture of an orc I had painted from my War of the Rings game. That's all I had uh, handy at the time, uh, but this time there's an actual photograph of the book, actually the second edition of the book, uh, which is not quite out yet, so you're using the first edition. And uh, then over here on Contending Perspectives, I'm sorry, on International Monetary, there's the book for that one too. All right, in both classes, one place you're going to want to look very frequently is content, and then if it doesn't come up automatically, overview. Now, I emailed this to everybody, but um, just to be sure, here's the Zoom link we're going to use all semester long for both classes. I, I started to make two differences. Like, what's the point? Uh, you know, if somebody, is, some of you are in both, and, uh, and you know, if, if you're not in both, good. You get to see the last part of contending perspectives. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and what I did was I went ahead and shared the entire semester uh, of uh, when the quizzes are, the exam, the, the uh, reflections, and, and essentially, to, to tell you the truth, it's just what I used to put the semester together. I just altered the, because I, I had to figure that out myself, like, you know, when am I going to assign stuff? 
And so I just basically shared it with you, but made a much nicer, neater key. Now, um, we are going to have to do A, B, as I've already told you, uh, half the class on one day and half on another. So on Tuesday, it's going to be the A half of the class. And which the half is that? Well, it turns out there's more people in essentially the first almost third of the alphabet, A through I. But A is A through I. And fortunately, in both classes, I was, I was really pleased I didn't have to make a different one for each class. That way, you know, it'd be easy to remember. And then, and then Jay-Z, sup, Jay-Z, is the B group, all right? So I should have made that the G group, or perhaps the OG group. I don't know. I hate wouldn't be OG. Um, so anyway, uh, Jay-Z is the B group. So on Tuesday, it's A. On Thursday, it's B. But on the next Tuesday, it's Z, which means everybody Zooms. Uh, and, and because there's a quiz on, on, uh, the, on the days there's quizzes, uh, I, I don't see that it makes sense to have half of you come in and get out your laptop and the other half sit at home with their laptop out taking a quiz. Just stay wherever is convenient for you and take the quiz, all right? And then we'll do the rest of the class on Zoom. So, uh, on as you can see here, there's going to be three, the, the next three Tuesdays after the first one are going to be all Zoom, and then actually the exam is after that, so uh, nobody comes in for that one. So over here, so the A-B thing does rotate, but not like... A is always Tuesday and B is always Thursday. A, B, A, B, A, B. So you'll have to check. That's why I said when you come to this page, if it doesn't pop up right away, hit content and overview. I put it in overview. Normally you put your syllabus and stuff there. It's like an overview because that's the thing you're going to need more than anything else. And again, it, it gives you, you can pull up a schedule on this thing as you know, you probably already know all this, uh, but just in case maybe you don't. Let's see, content, oh, course schedule. See that right there, course schedule? I'm going to click on that and put in full schedule. And then it's got all the assignments for the entire semester. So you can kind of look at a calendar right there. But hey, isn't this a lot more convenient? Heck, I even color-coded it. I should have done that. Well, I'll tell you, I started to do different colors for A and B, and I was like, John, it's getting too uh, uh, noisy, so let's not do that. And by the way, uh, so, and the schedules are identical for both classes. Uh, so, wherever you have A, B here, it's the same thing for International Monetary, and A will be A through I in International Monetary. Um, the quizzes are on the same day as uh, the, uh, what do you call these things? The reflections are due on the same day. I'll go over all that in a little bit. Uh, and the exams are on the, the only difference is that the final in, in, in continuing prospectus is November 24th, which is, by the way, the very last day of the semester. And the final in um, International Monetary, I believe, is the 19th. I, guess. It, I think it's right there, the 19th. We'll see in just a second. Uh, well, heck, let's have a look. Because that's kind of an important thing. And let's see. Uh, so I'll click Home. Oh, wait. I can also do this, can I? Well, I'll just click Home. Click Home. And International Monetary and content and actually look it didn't pop up this time I'm gonna hit overview oh you know what I should be doing I should be doing um, view as student alright content overview Why? Right, it's already there but still alright so nothing different here but as we go to other stuff it might be a little different alright so uh, exactly the same except um, yes it is November 19th uh, for International Monetary at 8 a.m. Right. Okay, so let's go back to Continuing Perspectives. And again, I've, I've, I've um, made them parallel. I think the biggest difference is going to be that you're required to have had Intermediate Macro for International Monetary, and you're not for Continuing Perspectives, but otherwise, there's not going to be much different in terms of how I set the course up. In fact, exceedingly little. Uh, okay, see over here on the left, Table of contents, and those contents are uh, course syllabus, how to study, and chapter 10. Uh, chapter 10 is from the second edition. I wanted you to read about the additional chapter in, in uh, the second edition, but the second edition is not out yet. So, you know, this is the very end of the semester. You just click on that, and voila, as they say in France when they're teaching a course, there's the chapter on ecological economics. Going back to the table of contents, uh, let's look at the syllabus first. Course syllabus. Again, I'll highlight any differences between this and international monetary, which will be exceedingly few. And actually, let me just 
download the whole thing rather than have to look at it inside that window. Okay. Fall 2020. Uh, who gives a crap where my office is? Because I'm not going to be going there. <laughs> uh, oh, I probably will now and then. Uh, but you know, they they uh, asked us all all meet all, all meetings with students and anyone else had to be via Zoom, so it's not really going to matter. Um, and look what the business school did. So they like renamed all their buildings Neely, and like I, I think it's the second digit that indicates which building. It is. Why don't we just rename the entire campus the TCU building and just make one of the digits which building it is? I think it's kind of dumb, but hey, that's just me. Well, maybe, maybe somebody paid him to do it. I don't know if Neely's dead or not, but maybe they paid him. All right, office. I don't know the number, but it's up on the floor. Oh, look, I did that twice. Uh, and, and by the way, if you had my class before and you saw one of those beautiful syllabi that I used to make with different columns and stuff like that, well, you know, they, they asked us all, well, they didn't ask us, they insisted that we all take this intensive online course on how to teach uh, online. And one of the things they emphasized was that a, a pretty syllabus is not necessarily easy to read. So I made an ugly syllabus that's easy to read. Office hours, uh, I guess Tuesday, Thursday, noon to one. I don't know. Uh, that's gonna, you know, I, I teach 8 to 9.20 and then 9.30 to 10.50. Uh, yeah. Uh, and so I'm figuring, okay, well, that'll give me time to get to my office or to the house. Uh, but, you know, anytime you have a question, I mean, that's what we did in Econometrics this summer. Uh, you know, just, uh, you, you've got my phone number. It's right there. Uh, my cell number. Text me, you know, and, and, and say, uh, say who you are, because um, if you don't say who you are, then uh, I don't know who you are. Certainly don't call without texting first and tell me who you are, because I'm not going to answer. Um, but, uh, yeah, say, you know, you have time to Zoom right now or whatever, and, and I always, within a couple of hours, sure, no, you know, no problem. Um, and, and so, yeah, there's the office hours there, but I only put that there because I had to. Uh, yeah, w whenever. Uh, and virtual via Zoom link provider, like, oh, no, I'm not going to do we'll, we'll do that. Well, I guess I better do that at some point, huh? I don't know. We'll think about that. All right. Uh, there's my, uh, there's my uh, email address. Oh, whoops. I actually clicked on it. Um, my email address. Uh, you may get emails from me from John Terrence Harvey at gmail.com because I have everything forwarded to my uh, Gmail account, which means that it's so much easier to keep track of all my mail. However, TCU recently installed a new um, sort of spoof checker that because I am forwarding things from TCU to Gmail, it marks it as a uh, um, probable or, or, or probable fraud or something like that, which is actually very exciting uh, to me. But nevertheless, uh, it's, I mean, unless I'm asking you for Apple gift cards, it really is me. Okay. And that might be me too, who knows. The final uh, in contending perspectives is the 24th. I believe I told you the 19th for the other one. Catalog description, yada, 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 All right. Uh, well, I'll say, we're, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do much specific here. I'll do that more in class, uh, but because uh, I want to focus here on the things that are, that, that are common to both courses. But, you know, in containing perspectives, what we do, we talk about different schools of thought, which, by the way, exceedingly few universities do. Uh, most universities act as if there's only one school of thought, uh, and I'll bet no other university in the world requires the course. Uh, and it is one of our most popular uh, parts of our program, uh, I think, because it's interesting to read about other, per uh, other perspectives. Uh, let's see. Okay, you see these learning outcomes down here? They make you come up with some. So I did. All right, so anyway, I, nobody ever reads them. And, and uh, you know, I mean, it's not a terrible thing to do, but I, I think it has more to do with um, uh, accreditation, that sort of thing. Prerequisites in this class are three hours of uh, credit in economics with a grade of C minus or better, and in, in, in international monetary, that's going to be intermediate macro with a C minus or better. Then a reminder here, econ majors must make a C minus or better to count this class, and this class is required of all econ majors. International monetary is the same rule. It is required of all international econ majors, and it is an option for uh, non-international econ majors. Let's see, there'll be three, and I, we also have an international econ minor now, too, so I, I think it's required there. You know what? I don't even remember. Um, let's see, there's the book. Uh, how exciting. <laughs> uh, so I wrote both books, right? Uh, the international monetary one uh, was my, the exchange rates were my main area of research for like a quarter century, uh, and I was always building up to coming up with a, a, a different theory um, in, in that book, so that's really... This book was written by accident. Uh, well, not by accident. The Containing Perspectives book. We created this new class, and there was no book. Or, or rather, I should say, the only book was 20 years old, and it wasn't very good. 
So I went to the booth at the conference where this book was sold, you know, that this publisher, and I said, um, uh, hey, have y'all got a more recent one? And I swear to you, I don't know how this happened, but I walked away having agreed to write a new book on this. And it was horribly painful because it is really hard to write in somebody else's school of thought. I thought about quitting several times, but I'm glad I didn't uh, because they asked me to do a second edition. Apparently it's done, you know, fairly well for this kind of book. All right, assignments. So we'll, we'll talk about that some more in class. Where did the mouse go? Yeah, there we go. Okay, I can't find the cursor. Um, uh, assignments. Okay, this is identical in both classes. Now, they, they make us do this. They make us show where the learning outcomes are associated with these right here. Uh, and, and I did. So, uh, so if somebody asks you, hey, did Harvey do that? You can say, well, yeah, he did. Yeah, I saw it. Uh, now, there's nine quizzes. I have never given quizzes in my life. But I decided that this was the way to do a class where everything's open book, open no. Because I am not going to try to tell you not to use your book or notes. Because you know what's going to happen is that the jerks in class will use their notes and books or find some way to get around it. And the honest people will get screwed. So I was like, you know what? Let's just make the rule. You can use your book and notes. That's fine. Um, can't use note homo, homo sapien. But you can use your book and notes. So they're all open book. Nine quizzes uh, based on, primarily on the books, uh, which I had, this took for freaking ever. I had to write all these quizzes from scratch. Uh, and you know what takes longer than anything are the wrong answers. <laughs> the easy answers are not that bad. They're all multiple choice. The easy answers are not that bad, but the wrong ones, like, well, I'm not going to come up with this. Every once in a while, I just kind of gave up and put down a funny answer, but otherwise, I usually try to put down something reasonable. Um, the qu well, we'll get to that in a minute. All right, then exam one is, instead of being 30, it's 15. Instead of that being 30, it's 15. And instead of that being 40, it's 20. All right, so there are a lot fewer points. I'll talk about what this on them in a minute. This is free points. In fact, one student has already turned hers in. Um, one of the biggest things I got from that online training was that it's very easy for students to kind of drift away during the online semester. Uh, and, and you know, I know that I know we're down as on campus, but some of our, some of your classmates are only online, and we may well find ourselves there uh, before too long. Let's hope not, but we may. And so, as a consequence, uh, in order to make sure you're checking in with me, a, so I, I know I, I know you're there. I know you're paying attention to the class. B, these are opportunities to say something about uh, how things are going. Um, let's see here. Let me show you. And they're identical in both classes. So, uh, but let me go to where that is. Activities. I'll only be able to see the first one here until I'm going to turn off John Harvey's student because then I can show you the other ones. Okay. Activities. Uh, assignments. Oops, I missed it. Assignments. Hey, how about I click on exams, huh? Yeah, I'm not doing that. All right, because uh, they're already in there. Although it would just be a link to an exam that you could download. All right, reflection one. Let's see. I need to. I need to say I want to edit it before I can read it. Uh, all right. I won't really get a chance to know you, uh, to know folks like I do in a normal semester. So I hope you don't mind answering a couple of questions for me. Why are you an econ major? Oh, I guess if you're not, say why you're not. I better change that. Uh, what worries you about this semester in terms of your academic success, and what time zone are you in? That's obviously very important for us in terms of, of, of exam. All right, so there's the first one, right? So you, you put down there whatever you want. You're going to get full credit regardless, but you might as well make it useful if you can. But Okay, so let's see the second one, and this is what I want to show you here. Assignments. Reflection 2. I can't remember exactly when it's due, but it's saying, just kind of checking in. We're in week three. How's it going? Any particular concerns? Because I can change stuff if I'm asking you. If I don't ask you, I'm not going to be able to change stuff. Uh, oh, uh, so in, in the summer course, um, one of the students said, well, it sure would be nice to have a, you know, some sort of guide because econometrics is, is a lot more wide open. So I sat down and typed up a guide. Right? So, you know, it's like, okay, I didn't even think about that. That's a good idea. You'll have a guide in here already. I've already typed it up, but in there I hadn't. Um, all right, so that's all the reflections are. Let me go back to John Harvey, a student. 
But uh, go ahead and do those because not only are they free points, but there's a logical goal to them as well. Now, uh, why don't uh, I have uh, as student here? Notice this activities, oh, assignments. It's the only one that's open. I can click on Reflection 1 and do it. I can go ahead and do it right now, which I'm not going to. I type it in down here. Um, but uh, I can't do the others because I don't want you to do them all now. <laughs> that would be, oh, yeah, I'll bet, in, I'll bet during week three this is how I'll feel. I mean, no, then it kind of defeats the purpose. So, so these, um, when will they open? Open September 1st, the day the Germans invaded Poland. Uh, open uh, and it closes September 3rd, which is the day the British and French declared war on uh, Germany. How do I know that? Because this room is full of things like this. It's my Panther. And uh, let's see. Then you know the next one, September 24th, September 29th, and so forth. Uh, at 11:59 is when they're due. So anyway, you'll see that. And, and by the way, th th there are there are times when it just goes away. Okay, so that you're like, oh, well, I think I'm going to do reflection one late. Now nah, it's gone now. You can't even click on it anymore. So that's how it's set up. All right, going back to this, that's where the reflections are. Uh, nothing surprising here. 89.5 to 100 is an A, uh, you know, on down like that. I hate plus minus, so I don't give them. All right, they're all online via TCU Online. Uh, and uh, let's see, you're not on campus. You're going to be taking everything exactly the same way as everyone else. Okay, students missing an exam or quiz must provide documentation of their inability to complete the assignment. Official absences will always be honored. By the way, there's no such thing as an, uh, as a, uh, um, uh, as an excused, uh, as an official excused absence. Dr. Butler is really touchy about that. So no, there's official absences, but there's no excused absences. Because excused implies you don't have to do what you missed. All right, so it, always on, honored. Other ones, I'll need to check up on it. If it's determined that you should be allowed to make up opportunity, then for a quiz, the student will be assigned to write an academic article review, which I spent hours this morning putting together the format and rubric for. Okay, so this is how stupid John Harvey can be. I got really tired of, of, of writing all these quizzes and stuff, and I said, God, I, I really want to be done. Maybe no one will miss a quiz all semester. <laughs> Maybe out of 18 quizzes in two classes with almost 60 people, no one will ever miss a quiz during a global pandemic. No, John, that's not going to happen. You might as well write up the assignment that's the alternative now. All right, and so I did. Um, and so I'll show you that in a minute. Let's see, uh, then, yeah, in fact, it has to be at least two pages because I just finished it. Video one week from the date of the original quiz. All right, late assignments, that, you know, if that's late, I'm not going to accept it. Uh, if it's determined you should be allowed to make up opportunity for a missed exam, then I'm just going to save the last day of class as, as uh, I always do for just make up exams. Finally, reflections are free points. Okay. Um, okay, here, here's the classes. Uh, uh, John, simultaneously on and off campus. Well, we'll I mean, okay, here, here's the, here's the um, can I open in the new window? Yeah, here we go. Here is the playlist for containing perspectives. There is every lecture for the entire semester. If it says 1.01, uh, .01, it is exam one, lecture one. 1.02 is exam one, lecture two, and on down like that. Uh, you know, here's lecture, here's exam two, lecture five. I, uh, about here, I think, these are left over from spring. So I just, these are all the ones from spring down here, so I thankfully didn't have to do those again. Uh, but I did uh, all the beginning ones, and I had to do everything for, for international monetary. All right, so there, in international monetary, uh, let's see, let me find that one. Uh, your channel. And international monetary. Okay, there's the international monetary ones. Uh, you'll notice there aren't as many. It's because there's graphs and stuff. It's just a more complicated subject. Uh, so, yeah, here's one on foreign exchange graphs. Here's um, examples of. Yeah, I'll skip ahead, and so you can start crying already. There. There you go. That looks like great stuff, doesn't it? Okay, uh, so that's what uh, that's where you find all the lectures is right on um, uh, YouTube playlist, and they're all done for the entire semester. All right, class meetings will also be broadcast, you know, via Zoom, and I I, I hope to 
they, they didn't get the all, all the hardware in until which I totally understand they had a tough time getting all the cameras and stuff um, so I haven't even had time to see where I'm teaching yet so uh, so whether or not I figure out how to record it or not uh, we, uh, we'll see let's see yeah my, my experience in teaching econometrics completely online was that students found the live meetings extremely helpful uh, and we had nearly perfect attendance all semester which was interesting um, let's see here Oh yeah, I'll post instructions at TCO online regarding how we'll deal with the. And I've already shown you that attendance engagement. Uh, I obviously, if you attend and are engaged, then you're going to do better. But I certainly don't require it. Uh, I figure you're an adult, so you know if you can never attend the course and make an A, then you know what I put down in the grade book. Hey, if you attend every day and make an F, then I sadly write down an F because that would be, be a real shame. Let's see. Oh, I'm only going to use your TCU. Uh, email address. Ooh, that reminds me of something I should have emphasized back here. I just kind of skipped over it. And that was under content, overview, here in this document. Let's see, where is it? Also, you must use your TCU Zoom account or it won't let you in. Right? So I put down authorized only, which means that only if you use the TCU Zoom account will let you in. Melanie was in a meeting this summer that got bombed by someone, and um, it was pretty horrible. The images they put in. So let us let us not have that happen in other contending perspectives in international monetary. It's got to be you. Plus, that way your names come up. So if I can take uh, I can take role a lot easier. All right, I, I didn't do the waiting room thing. Uh, it, I set it to where you could join without me being there. So I hope it all works okay. Um, the only problem happens sometimes is that I'll go in and, and, and do, like we've been having a regular happy hour Zoom with some uh, friends in political science. Um, and then it says, do you want to leave your other meeting? And I think that might shut this one down. I don't know. So, uh, But otherwise, we'll just use the same one all the time. And you shouldn't need the password because it's built into that. All right, shut up, John. They know that. Let's see. Email. Okay, I already told you about this. Uh, and by the way, okay, so let me tell you this. The quizzes are, are graded automatically. Uh, the computer just does that automatically. The exams are not. I gotta do it by hand. But I really love this this summer in econometrics. I, I have it, uh, I can set a setting where it, it, they're turned in without any names. And it will not tell me the name even if I want to know until all the grades are done. And then you hit publish and the grades go out to you and I suddenly find out, pardon me, who made what grade? I'm gonna do that again. I really like that a lot. Uh, it's a really fair thing to do. And that's kind of what it's talking about there. Of course, schedule, you can skip right over that because it's you know, there was one of the items that that was required to put in the syllabus, so I did. Um, but I mean, honestly, go, uh, following along with the quizzes is a better guide. Uh, I heard a long time, I, I, way back when I was uh, putting together a syllabus, I thought, hey, I should look on the internet and see what other people put on their syllabi. And one of the things this one professor was putting on there was their, their qualifications. And I thought that's an interesting idea because I, I kind of take it for granted if I'm the student that the professor's qualified. But, you know, I mean, it's kind of nice to know. Uh, and so, you know, but I, I was the director of the International Confederation of Associations for Pluralism and Economics, which was an organization that dealt with different schools of thought. Uh, I'm going to open up here the same section on the international monitoring because that, that will be a bit different. And Dr. Garnett and I were officers in that. Uh, let's see, my PhD is in neoclassical economics, but I kind of do post-Keynes institutional stuff myself. And of course, I wrote that freaking book that was so exhausting. Um, let's see, that's required in the syllabus. Of course, you know there's a spot. Although I did add this, uh, because last time I was department chair, I'm department chair again, some idiot said, volunteer to be department chair. Um, it was me that said that. And uh, that was back when they were still on paper. And so what would happen to the spot scores was that they would first go to the dean, and no, the dean did not look over everybody's in the entire college. But presumably, if there was somebody they were having trouble with, they looked at that person. And uh, as chair, I did. I looked through and I made notes. Uh, and so, you know, somebody does read those, all right? So I just want you to know that. Let's see, there's the syllabus for political science. Let me go, I'm sorry, political science, uh, for um, international monetary. There, there's the the uh, playlist. I hope it's right. Let's find out here. Hey, it's not acting like a like a, a URL. Hang on. I'll just have to do this, I guess. Oh, John. Come on, come on, come on. You can do it. You play computer games all the time. You can do this. Right click, copy, window, right click, 
paste and go. Yep, that's the right one. Okay, good. Uh, and let's see here. Course schedule. Again, skip over that. Search for qualifications. Uh, one of my fields is international. I, I wrote the book for the class. And then there's a bunch of my international publications. Uh, so going back to what? 1996. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. This must be on. Oh, I, I, let me tell you this. I, I made some decisions. These syllabi are getting so long now because there are so many sections that, that quite understandably, the university wants us to include. And especially this semester, there were things they wanted us to put on there because of the, uh, um, uh, the global pandemic and the way we're having the new class. So um, I'm in a weekly reading group. I never thought I'd do something like that uh, with some other professors on campus. What, just on Zoom, of course. And one of them, we were talking about syllabi, and one of them said, hey, the, the, uh, somebody showed me how to do it with links so that it's not a thousand pages long. And let me show what I mean here. I'll get up to that in a second here. Look, all those links. Rather than put that whole section in, there's just a link. I was like, oh my God, that's brilliant. But uh, I was asking Dr. Butler, the uh, associate dean and a member of our department, and he said, I said, is there anything I probably shouldn't put down just as a link. He said, yeah, probably the Statement of Disability Services. He said, they, they really are, they, they probably want us to put that down there, you know, explicitly. And then I decided on my own I wanted to do this one here, a uh, statement on TCU's anti-discrimination. So, let me tell you the big thing about the disability services. Um, there are people who have learning disabilities, and uh, fortunately there are some strategies you can follow to help, but never typically completely get rid of the issue, unfortunately for them, but certainly to help. And one of them is that uh, you may be allowed to have more time on an exam. So, however, in order for me to know that, you have to go to, let's see, student access and accommodation. Uh, email them or whatever, and they test you. And, you know, even if you've been tested uh, by the president of the testers of the world, uh, yeah, TCU still got to do it. Because, you know, we need to know relative to our ability to provide services and relative to your needs. Uh, and then they send around a, a form to me and tell me what, what the situation is. Uh, and then I can, you know, I, I, I can take care of that. Uh, and it's never a problem. Um, 99 times out of 100, Somebody needs more time. I said, sure. Um, the second thing I always want to make sure I tell you there is that it's not retroactive. If you take exam one and then get tested and find out, oh, I should be allowed more time. Um, and by the way, those of you that aren't allowed more time, they would rather not be allowed more time. <laughs> They'd rather not have the learning disability is, is my uh, long time experience here. Uh, so, but anyway, going back to the main point, if you find out after exam one, you can't go back and retake exam one. That's done, all right? So uh, it's not retroactive. And this one down here, um, let's see. Yeah, I, I, I gotta tell you, the, you, you know those those things they make you take every year at a job, uh, the videos you have to watch on, um, uh, oh, should I come to work drunk? You know, well, no, not usually, stuff like that. Uh, what do they call those? those? Those HR videos. They had a really, really good one um, a couple years ago that moved me to want to include some of this stuff in here more explicitly than I ever had before. Um, now, I think at this point, this is required on all syllabi. Uh, but uh, the anti-discrimination in Title IX information. But, you know, uh, basically the idea is that you shouldn't be discriminated against on the basis of rage. Uh, rage. I combined ace and <laughs> age and race. Uh, uh, let's see. Age, race, color, religion, and so forth. Um, and also prohibits unlawful sexual and gender-based harassment and so on. Um, and then Title IX uh, is um, responsibility. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mandatory reporter. Yeah, apparently, did I add my little thing about econ down here? No, I didn't. Um, uh, and there's no uh, easy way to say this, uh, but uh, I do want to talk about it, uh, and, and that is uh, you know, sexual assault uh, on campus is, is a big deal. And uh, this is something that we should not have to put up with and that people shouldn't feel guilty about. There's all kinds of horrible things that come along with that, and I'm gonna share something with you here on video uh, that uh, that happened to me uh, when I was 18, and it was, um, oh, probably a relatively minor incident. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. Definitely relatively minor compared to things that happen to other people, but my God, it just does so many things to your head. Uh, and, and so, 
what this is saying is, look, don't keep quiet about it. Uh, please feel free to talk to someone. Don't feel guilty. If you feel like there's something that happened that was wrong, then 99% likelihood it was. All right. So, so don't second guess yourself and so forth. Uh, and, and, and the other thing I want to mention here is, now, were someone to say something to me, I'm a mandatory reporter. I have to go and uh, tell whatever the, our Title IX office is um, that so-and-so told me about an incident. Uh, Melanie, my wife who teaches fourth grade, has a similar situation with if she suspects a kid has been um, abused, you know, bruises on him or something like that, she is required by law under penalty of law to report that. And it's really a protection for her because now she can always say, well, I had to. Uh, rather than pick and choose, you know, so I'm going to report this person but not that person. Actually, I got to report everybody. So anyway, same sort of situation here. So, uh, and what the, the great video that I watched uh, that really kind of inspired me to include these things more explicitly on my syllabus was... And this student started to tell uh, her professor about an incident, and the professor said, well, now I'm, gonna, I'm a mandatory reporter, you know, so I absolutely want you to talk about this. I just want you to understand that if once you tell me, I have to report this. I said, but instead, you could go over to, um, let's see, let move the screen down here. Can I promise to refrain from forwarding information, or not required to report it, uh, to, to the actual office, well, we'll see. I guess it would be the campus community response team. Well, that's for bias. I'm sorry, uh, for uh, Title IX office right there. Yeah, that's where you would. That, that's where you go. And you know what the great thing about the video was? The professor said, "I'll walk you there." And I thought that was really the right way to do it uh, because you know somebody's going to get part way. They say, nah, "I don't want to do this." Said, no, I'll walk you there. Uh, so this you wouldn't feel alone and so forth. Anyway, it, it's a and, and one of the reasons why it became particularly important to me above and beyond what I shared with you earlier, was that uh, economics has a horrible reputation for these issues. Not on TCU's campus, but, but, but in general. Uh, the, and and uh, we can talk about that at some point if you want to. Uh, but um, as far as it is very white male dominated. Uh, and, and so, um, and a lot of things are coming out now about uh, abuse and, and uh, discrimination and so forth. And... Uh, I don't like that, so that's why it's on the syllabus. All right, let's see here. What else we got on here? Uh, I, I just did these as links. Uh, if you're new to this stuff, go here to figure out how to navigate TCU online. Here's how to use the assignments tool. Uh, how to view the rubrics and fields. Oh, I'm gonna, I haven't checked that yet. Let's see here. See rubrics anywhere? Okay, I'm logged in as a student. No, I, I don't. Let me go back over here to international. Oh. Did I mean to do that? Yeah, I did. To uh, containing perspectives and see if I only made it visible on one by accident. Assessment. Nope, I meant to make it visible. I'll, I'll check it out later. But anyway, I, I, I created a rubric. Uh, and so um, this is just, I guess I need to read this to see <laughs> how to figure that out. But, uh, you know, if, and, and that's for that thing where if you miss a quiz, right? Uh, the discussions tool, we're not going to discuss anything. We're not going to do that. Uh, view grades and class progress, that's easy enough. You go up here to assessment and grades. And this is going to be the grades for John Harvey. And John Harvey has zeros all the way down the board because he hasn't taken any of the assignments yet. And, oh yeah! Uh, again, most of y'all probably know about this already, but the mobile access and the Pulse app, apparently there's some app you can get where it'll like remind you you have an assignment coming up. Anything that's logged into uh, on this TCU online, it will let you know all the deadlines and stuff. And that sounds fantastic. People who need uh, help reading, there's a sort of built-in thing that, that, you know, that will read the stuff to you. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is about don't cheat. Um, this one's about... Don't be uh, using materials here and, well, you know, it's not the case in my class, but in some classes the PowerPoints are copyrighted by the publisher. Well, don't go sharing those with somebody because that's, uh, all of a sudden you'll find yourself in a minimum security prison for the rest of your life. Uh, here's common courtesy, but we're not going to do the, um, net, or we're not going to do discussions anyway. And let's see, uh, yeah, there's emergency response stuff. Here's a bunch of helpful phone numbers. 
All right, here's the specific stuff for this semester. Recording of class sessions. Okay, it's very important here. Um, I, as I've mentioned already, I'm going to try to record the sessions for those who are unable to, to attend live, although we always have our backup of the, of the um, YouTube videos, which will be much more comprehensive than what we do in class, given the various limitations. Um, if you are unwilling uh, uh, to... Um, okay, so this, this is for... Uh, for um, what do you call it? Zoom. If you don't want your image or video recorded, then, you know, um, then be sure to keep your camera off and don't use your profile image. And, uh, you know, if you don't want to be recorded saying something, then don't unmute and say something for crying out loud. What the hell's wrong with you? Uh, let's see. And down here, they, they, they only added this one late. If you don't think you want to be videoed and you're in class, you need to tell the professor so that they can make sure you're sitting somewhere where they, you can't be seen on the camera. I mean, what if you're in witness protection, you know? What if you used to be a hitman for the mob and you just go, you know, I'll go back to college. Let's see. Uh, and then it's just telling you that everything's going to suck this year. Oh, wait, no, wait, that's not what it says at all. All right. Um, everything will be different this year. Uh, masks. And, and, and I got, as I've mentioned several times here, my mother's 79, my dad's 82, about to be 83 a week from yesterday. And so I really don't want to kill them. So uh, I would greatly appreciate everyone following these rules very closely. And remember... Yeah, if you don't feel off to go to class, hey, no big deal. We've got that all backed up right now. Face coverings required on campus. You can take them off uh, once a day for 20 minutes. Oh, no, no, no. When you're alone in your private office or dorm room. Uh, and then uh, between classes, it says if everyone's out there together, you're supposed to you know, keep um, wearing it. Mission statement. Yes, mission. All right. Um, I'm going to stop here and start it again. I'm going to make two videos out of this uh, so that I can go over a couple of the really important items that are still on there. So, 